Welcome to Eternal Truth Now. I'm Elaine Haynes. I'm Kerry Haynes. We're glad you joined us today. Today we're going to be talking about the necessity of having a well-made vessel, not having a poorly made vessel, because we've been in a series of um, seaworthy or shipwrecked, and this will be number 14. But first I want to tell you a little bit about our ministry, why we named it Eternal Truth Now, is because we love the Word of God. We've seen the power of God's Word too heal, to save, to deliver, to transform, to bring reconciliation, restoration, redemption, and we desire that for you as well. So as I said, we've been doing a series of seaworthy or shipwrecked and teaching on the different elements necessary to have a seaworthy vessel. The number one chief thing is to see him who is worthy, to keep your eyes upon him and then you won't become shipwrecked. But we've been talking about the different ways in which we sometimes do the, to get, become shipwrecked or, or get into the path of becoming shipwrecked and how um, giving you key, key principles from Scripture. Um, one of the things, I'll just list what we've covered so far. This is, again, number 14. Some of them have A's and B's. But the importance of words, not having idle words, the... the um, that the tongue steers the ship, heart issues, tempting Christ by murmuring and complaining, doubting that he's with you, the distractions of other people and other things, getting our eyes on our circumstances or on our own feelings and thoughts versus what God is saying, the danger of offense, and having a leaking vessel, in other words, not being filled with the Spirit, we talked about that, and letting the captain navigate your ship. And then last time, we had two sessions of the peril of presumption and how important it is to stay humbled before the hand of God and to look to Him to lead us. So today, again, we're going to be talking about um, the danger of having a poorly made vessel, and we want the master ship builder to build us. But Carrie, if you would open us up in prayer. Yes, God, we just desire that you would renew a right spirit within us, God, that you would, you would build our spirit, uh, you would... Uh, tear down and build up yes, Lord. that which is necessary to uh, that is perfect in your sight that would we would be conformed to the image of your son yes Lord. we thank you god for your your heart your desire is to do that lord and we just we sit at your feet yes, Lord. and ask you that you've said that we have an unction from the holy one and we know all things so we ask God to the end that you'd be glorified that that unction, we would speak from that unction of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. That, you, Father. that wise understanding, wise wisdom would come forth. There would be a building by your Spirit, Lord. Yes, Lord. To your glory, Amen. God. We need yes, Lord, you. God. We need you to do this through us. Yes, Lord. We pray in Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. You know, when you were in the introduction, uh, you were talking about the eternal. And I, I just, there was a verse, I, I just one verse I wanted to, uh, it's such an interesting verse in Ecclesiastes that we had talked about this uh, some months ago, actually. In Ecclesiastes 3, 4, speak, thinking of the eternal mm -hmm. nature of the Word of God. Yes. And the, uh, now we know eternal is, eternal life is to know God. To, that's what Jesus said. Amen. He said. But he says, uh, Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 3.15, he says, that which hath been I love that verse. is now. Yes. Amen. And that which is to be already hath been. already been. Amen. And God requireth that which is past. Let me read that again. That which hath been is now. Amen. The eternal is already now. It's now. It's now. And that which is to be hath already, already been. been. Amen. In the mind of God, He's already purposed it all out. Yeah. It's already existed. That we in were, and that we were in Him. Yes. Before the foundation of the world. Amen. That we were put. God put us in Christ. Yes. Before the Amen. foundation of the world. Yes. And foreordained. He's already foreordained all the works that you will walk in, even before any of them were written. Your names are written in the book. And all the days of your lives have been planned out. God knows. We can be trusted to look to Him. And you know, the, what we want here, again, that Jesus said in uh, John uh, 6, He says, uh, 
labor not for the meat which perisheth. It's, it's interesting. This is after he fed the 5,000. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it said that he had compassion on them. Mm -hmm. On that they'd been with him for days, they'd mm -hmm. fallen and been with him, and he fed them mm -hmm. miraculously. Amen. But after he did that, he says, labor not for the, even it said, you know, you didn't come for the miracles. You came actually to be fed. You know, it's yeah. kind of interesting, he, he, you know, that he called him out on that. But he said, labor not for the meat which perishes, Amen. But for that meat which endures unto everlasting life, Amen. or to eternal life. Amen. And we know that God's word doesn't return void. And again, Lord, we pray your word Amen. would, you'd send your word and, and instruct us, lead mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. help us renew our spirit, renew it Amen. to have a right spirit, you know, to mm -hmm. cleanse us. Mm -hmm. Let there be the washing of water by the word. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned, you mentioned building. And that's one of the, the key verse for this session of, of we're being built. We're, we're building our vessel every day. We're building mm. something. Right. And, you know, Paul admonishes us of how we build. And he says, according to the grace of God, which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation. And another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He is, or he is the foundation laid. And also in Ephesians 2, 19 through 22, that was 1 Corinthians 3, 10 and 11. This is Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. Paul, again, speaking to the church at Ephesus. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, or that's that piece from which everything else is built upon, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. We're being built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. And it's so important how we build. It's important how we view ourselves, how we view God, how we view others, that we build correctly according to His instruction. And Carrie, if you would share that incredible verse in Ecclesiastes. Oh, yeah, another incredible, Ecclesiastes incredible verse. verse as, uh, it's I, just I, incredible it's just, verse. Uh, yeah, it is so incredible. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 11. God. He says, the words of the wise are as goads. They, they prod you. Yes. And as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. So these the words of the wise are as goads. What what would you say goads is again? A you, goad is is that it's a pointed stick that they would use to prod the sheep. Okay. To keep them moving in the right direction, to keep them out of danger. So the words of the wise, God's words spoken through his vessels are like goads prodding you. They can also be something that pierces. And we know that the Word of God does that. It pierces like a, a double-edged sword, dividing asunder the soul from the spirit and the joints and the marrow and is a discerner even of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It pierces and divides the thought and intent of your heart. Shows you that. But back to the verse. They're goads. The words, the God's Word is a goad and as nails fastened, fastened by the, the masters, masters of assemblies, assemblies God. which are given for, well, that's what Paul was. He was yes. a master builder. Yes. And, uh, but the thing about goads again is mm -hmm. that when you're prodding, it's like, it's kind of like in the Psalm 23, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Now, a rod and a staff, actually, part of that is correction, you know, yes, this, pro, this, of course. this hook. Yeah. This says, no, you're, you're, you're getting off. You're getting off. Right. Here's the path that I that I want you. And on. didn't Jesus say to Saul as he became Paul? Yeah. You're kicking against the goads. It's a, yeah. the word is pricks in some versions, but the goads it's the same thing because they prick you. You know, and I. You're I, kicking against 
God trying to fence you in. He's trying to do something in your life, and you've been kicking against that. I can relate to that. Yeah, I, I can relate. Can I can relate, relate to, that. to that because relate to a that. lot of what we were talking about of having a right spirit, not being presumptuous, right. poorly right. made vessel, is you know out the, in the spirit of Christ, being built with the mind of Christ. Yes, uh, on a rock. So that goad, that rock that he is, that goad. Yeah. Like I like what you said that you know, I'm trying to do this and you're right. kicking against right. it. Right. You know you're. You're, you're seeing oh, it. I'm Jesus. showing it to you. You're seeing it, and then you're Jesus. not continuing in it. You know what? I'm just hearing something right now that, that with all that's been going on, all this turmoil, all this conflict, all this, there's many that are kicking against God is trying to set a new order. There is a lot of chaos. There's a lot of confusion. But out of that, God is right. He's setting a new order. He is setting an order of eternal structure. He is desiring to bring forth his church the way that he intended and not the way that it's been set up by man. He is yeah. desiring and he is moving, he is shifting, he is shaking, he is rearranging. We can't go back to the way that it was. He's not going to allow it. It will bring nothing. It will fall apart. You can't do it. This is going to be built on his foundation, the foundation of Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. It is coming to that place where it will be built upon him and him alone. He will be seen as the one upon the throne. God, we thank you, Lord God. You know, when, Jesus. You know, I, I, when you said that thank what you, you were hearing, you know, and I've been hearing the same thing that these several months now, that there's a lot of us that have been, I know I've been, I know there's a lot of us have been in like a heaviness. Mm -hmm. That, but you know, there, there's something that in First Peter 1, uh, 1, 6, it says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, and notice what he says, if need be. If need be. You are in heaviness. Mm -hmm. And I looked that up, that's discouragement. Yes. It actually means okay. to discourage. You are in discouragement through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be much more mm. precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing or the revelation. revelation. That's what that appearing you brought out, the, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and this is what, like, see, if Paul... This is what he was trying to do, what he's trying to do with us, what you were just saying, that this foundation has to be rebuilt. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's not what I think it is. No. What I was hoping right. it would be, a little bit of Jesus and a lot of me. Mm. And even though I may not really fully realize I'm doing that, mm -hmm. I have secret sins, hidden faults that right. I don't even understand. Right. But that what I've noticed is that that when you're in a trial, God's I, I think you mentioned this one time, maybe even in your book, that God's trying to reveal another a, a different a higher an right. aspect of Jesus that, that you, you may seen. not know right. or that you may not allow it because you're still kicking. I'm still kicking against the goads. We're still trying we like to do things the way we've always done them. It's comfortable. That's the thing. We even even those things that have happened in the spirit, right. then we and when something else arises, we and this is just what the mind does, the actual natural mind does, it connects pieces that look the same, that look similar. So there's something similar, a similar situation, but God wants to do something altogether new. You know, He didn't heal. Jesus didn't heal the same way all the time. You know, sometimes He spoke a word. Sometimes He laid hands. Sometimes He breathed. Sometimes He spit into mud and threw it on their eyes. I mean, there's lots of different ways that Jesus does things. And that's how God, in his omnipotence, in his omniscience, who knows all things, and he knows exactly what each person needs to get moving into what he has to call them into. Into the spirit, he, actually, of, he knows. of Jesus himself. Yes, amen. And, you know, amen. again, we, we may have bits and pieces of that along the way, but... 
again, I break that example of the of James and John that yeah. said they wanted to bring fire down on Samaria because they hadn't received Jesus. Yes, they got mad because he he was yeah. walking through, not paying attention to him. Should we bring fire down on them? And Jesus says, "You know not what spirit you are of." No. And again, it's this this cleansing of our spirits that we may not even understand what it right. is. And there's like a perversity in our spirit that, that the Bible says that in uh, Isaiah uh, 29 in the Amplified, that turns things upside down, that makes ourselves of more importance than God. Mm. And, you know, we think, oh, well, I know I don't want to do that. But there's something in you that's doing that. You know, and it's it can be so subtle. It can just be, you know, you'll hear a little whisper, go do this, and your mind immediately, well, no, I don't want to do that. You know, you don't even think about it. Yeah. It's not even a conscious thought. You're just like, right. no. But you don't realize it's God telling you to do that, perhaps. Or if you do, on some level, you sort of justify why you're not going to do it. That's so true, Elaine. That, that's such a good point. I've had to pray into that before when I, I'm not paying attention sometimes. That's and making, a big problem. That's making light right. of that the Holy Spirit is speaking it's to me. speaking to you, right. And I'm going, oh, I like just in one ear and out the other. I'm not, you know, like it says taking in Philippians, I, I'm not taking every thought captive. Right. You know, I'm not willing to gird up the loins of my mind right. and to uh, notice what I'm thinking. I'm walking circumspectly, redeeming the time because the days are evil. To walk circumspectly, to be discerning, to be alert and aware uh, and conscious of what's happening to recognize the perilous times that we're in and how important it is that all hands be on deck to use another ship term yeah but Carrie yeah you know, before we go any farther I want you to share um, back to that Ecclesiastes verse the words of the wiser is goads and his nails fashioned I, yeah, fastened I a, by the masters of assembly which got which are given from one shepherd because you had a powerful dream and I did and it's interesting we didn't say this I'm just gonna say it in passing which are given from one shepherd you did say that so no, but actually that God he, he Jesus, is. the Lord is our shepherd yeah, that's right yeah and here it is in a right verse there. in Ecclesiastes Old Testament. I mean, you wouldn't even think they're talking about right. the Lord really one shepherd uh, but this dream I had then we it, it was a I, then I looked up a ver this verse because this is kind of what it was. It was a dream where, and I don't have that many dr spiritual dreams to be honest with you, but I knew I'd had one, and I was in this like uh, uh, factory, this like plant, and a, and a uh, manufacturing plant where they are manufacturing uh, like computer boards in a large uh, scale, and you know there's a lot of jobs that went into that and I know no, I'm still not a computer person at all and I my this man that I was interviewing for the job and I was just standing there and uh, I knew nothing about it the job the to be qualified for it and the the boss says if, if you just say if you just say yes you'll know how to do it that's okay <laughs> it's just be willing and, and, you know, if you just say yes, you'll Amen. know how to do it. And, Amen. you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I've had to do that in this ministry, mm -hmm. in, in preaching and bringing the word and being sitting here vulnerable, if you will, in, in weakness, depending on the Lord. And when we drive here, we say, Lord, help us. Amen. You know, like Amen. To, to like we pray to speak from your unction Amen. of the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know, to not this just not to be a, a textual, uh, a teaching that there's no life in it. No, n not what God really wants to accomplish, Amen. really wants to show us. And so, part of what in this dream was that if I just say yes, and Amen. you know, uh, uh, I'm speaking to maybe some of you that are in ministry or that God's calling you to do maybe a, a small thing. And uh, Elaine and I go through this again every time we minister. It's, mm -hmm. I'll be just transparent and frank. You know, I mean, Paul says he, he's, he came before them in fear and trembling. Amen. And we do. He we came do. before them in fear and trembling. Amen. And, you know, it's a responsibility to rightly divide the Word of God. I Amen. can't just go off and give some opinion I have. Amen. But this thing about what Elaine and I do and what, what this dream was about was that 
uh, we've likened, you know, when the priest in the, uh, in the Old Testament, they carried the Ark of the Covenant, which was the presence of the Lord. And they carried it, and when they came to the Jordan, and all of Israel had to go past the Jordan, it was all full of water. And God said, take the priest, carry the Ark, and when they step into the Jordan, the waters will dry up. After they stepped. After they stepped. Amen. So After they, they stepped. are looking down on it. It yeah. wasn't dried up. Right. So once you take that step, right. the guy that was hiring me for the job, if you just say yes, you'll know how to do it. Amen. And I think, too, there was another piece to it, Carrie, that you shared with me when you had it, is that you had, like, one little piece. There was this bigger thing that's an assembly line. There's bigger things being built, but you had one little piece. And other people had other pieces. Right. And, you know, to me that was so prophetic of, you know, the walk in the spirit that we have. You know, that we don't see all of the things, the way that it all fits together. You know, I think of it often... I used to sew a lot, and so tapestries, if you see a beautiful tapestry, which is, if you don't know what that is, it's a, it's a, it's a woven um, hanging uh, picture of some kind of beauty normally. The other side of it is just a bunch of tangled threads. You can't even tell there's any kind of order or any, any kind of beauty or a picture of any kind when you look at the, the underside. And then you flip it over. So we don't always, and it's beautiful, and we don't all, we don't, always see what God is doing, the big picture. There's so many different pieces. We pray for something. We decree and declare, and we prophesy, and we see it. We see it. But there's so many other pieces. There's so many other people and other um, facets of what God is doing in the earth, in your family, and acquaintances you haven't met yet that are all going to play a part in this bigger picture that we can't yet see and it's so imperative that we trust him and then there's this verse in that speaks to that in Ephesians 4 7 through 13 but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ wherefore he saith when he ascended up on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men and this is a little parenthetic. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, the building up. We're talking about having a well-made vessel, a well-built vessel by the wise master builder versus a poorly made vessel to the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ. That is the purpose for all the gifts. The, the office gifts is to build up the rest of the body so they can do the gifts, the, the things that God has called them to do until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God yeah. unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Each part, each person playing a part, each person doing their portion of what God has called the body to do. And as we do that, we build the other pieces up. When, you know, let's, I love this, God showed me one time. If I have three gifts, let's just say, with th you know, three gifts, and I, we have fellowship and and I minister to you out of my gifts, not even knowing it. There's part of how I operate, and I'm just, you know, sharing this, sharing that, and it's imparting a measure in you. Now, you have, you have three gifts. Now, you, I'm using that number loosely. Now, you were fellowshipping, and now, now I have six because he just imparted into me. Now, you go out. Now, you have six. Now, you're imparting. God, how he multiplies, how he builds, how he, there's such expansive orchestration by the Spirit until we are a body, a building with the inhabitant habitation of the Spirit of God. Jesus Christ being seen in fullness because each of us has a piece, has a part, with Him being the head. From the head all things, all instruction is given in our brain, the head of our body, the brain instructs our body what to do. There's things we don't even think about breathing. You don't think about, I better breathe. No, you don't think about that. All the, there's other parts that are, there's a word for that, all 
autonomous or something or yeah. something like that. Autonom autonomic. 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 Yeah. The part we don't even, we don't think about certain things we do. I'm going to move my hand. I move it. But there's other things we don't even think about. The ways that our organs all operate and do the things they're supposed to do, and that's how the body is. We all operate edifying one another, being built up in the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect that's, man. That's what I noticed now. that that kind of the end of this was, this yes. verse was, till we all come to union of the faith, and, the, and, and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Yes. You know, uh, that it says in the Bible that grace and truth be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of Him. Yes, because in John, it tells, First John, it tells us that He is full of grace and truth. And, you know, He, and, it, and Jesus says that, you know, this is eternal life in John 17, 3, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Amen. And so this process, this, this, this working together is to, to culminate, part of the culmination yes. of it is the knowledge of the Son of God. Amen. Amen. And, you know, you could, if, this is why we do this, too, because G, it says in John, Jesus is the Word. Yes, He is. You know, He is the Word. Right flesh and dwelling among us. He's so, the Word. Yeah, as we, Amen. as we unfold, the you word. know, un, 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 yes. open, as we unopen the Word of God. Yes. And, you know, that it says the entrance of thy word brings light. light. Yes. And that, that uh, you know, if, as many as received him, to them gave he the right or the power to become Come. sons of God. Amen. So that's why we do this. And, Amen. and to, Amen. to for there to be an entrance of his word, Amen. for there to be a receiving Amen. of Christ. Yes. Because Amen. then, when you receive him and his mind yes. towards the Father, and he can Amen. make you a worshiper of the Amen. Father, that you'll want to only do those things that please, that please the Father. Yes. So that <clears throat> as Amen. we yes. do take our part, our gift, and <clears throat> come together, and <clears throat> so that there's an increase mm -hmm. of the knowledge of God. And so that, that's what we pray for you this day, Amen. that, Lord, I thank you that your word does not return void, yes, but that it will accomplish that for which you have sent it. Yes, and you Lord, send Lord. your word with the knowledge of you for us to be enlightened and illuminated. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network. HSBN Television.